this is a video in the series of videos on LC3 programming. In this video, I'm going to talk about the trap instruction. We'll look at what it is used for, what, what the purpose of uh, trap instruction is in any ISA, uh, what its implementation is on, on LC3, and uh, we'll take an example of uh, uh, several examples of the use of trap um, and in one single program. So first, uh, what is the trap instruction? The trap instruction is a mechanism by which a user program accesses a system service. Uh, we can think of the system as something as simple as just a bunch of code or you can also think of this as the operating system. So what we saw when we looked at the memory layout of our of the IS uh, of the LC3 machine is that we said that the memory is divided into what we said was it's divided into two parts, um, locations uh, 0, x000, all the way up to x2fff are what we call a system space. And locations from this all the way up to certain point, which we will look later on, is called the user space and there's a region at the bottom which we will for now call the IO mapped region. We'll see about this later on but for now we want to we want to realize that this is where the operating system sits. The OS sits. So for us, an OS, for, for us, the operating system is uh, just a collection of services. So let's see how these collection of services are made available to a user program. So in the operating system, region which starts at x0000 there is a location on lc3 which was decided at 0 at x0020 and going up to 20 21 22 23 24 and 25 it could be have it could have more but in lc3 right now the current os that's running on lc3 provides one, two, three, six services, current LC3 OS provides six services. And these services are available at these locations. But what do we mean by available at these locations? At these locations, we will find addresses so this this here is called the TVT or the trap vector table. The trap vector table holds the addresses of the services that the OS provides. So for example, if I look at, I'm going to open LC3 right now, and if I were to just run, don't worry about the code that is here, if I were to just look at LC3, and if I were to go to the memory location x 
zero zero two zero I will find some addresses so let's just grab these values from here and see what they are holding right now so I'm gonna just take the first five of these sorry for six of these and let's take a look at what these values are so what we see from a screen capture of of the LC3 table is at x0020 we have an address which is 00021b what that tells me is that at x 021b there is some code and this code is providing the service that corresponds to the service which is what we call as in this particular case we call this the get c service which which we'll see the details about it it le allows the user to type a character and then reads the character and returns it to us similarly the next one here cor corresponds to an out service so this is a get c service get c service is the out service this is the puts service which puts out a string out just puts out one character and there are other services like in and put sp which we will not use but they have their own uh, service that they provide and the last one which is a halt service which is trap x25 so because these services are are in this table they have to be referred to by their respective numbers so so what we will see is this is actual description of each of these each of these so x20 get c says that read a single character from the keyboard the characters character is not echoed onto the console its ascii code is copied into r0 the high 8 bits of r0 are cleared so if you invoke the service it it will return after it completes its service it will return in register r0 a character that the user has typed in notice that it also says that it doesn't echo the character to the console so we'll we'll look at each of these services uh, we'll focus mainly on the first three services for now x21 is if you want to write a car character out to the display it expects that you will put it in r0 um, and and the service will display it onto the screen onto the console put as is is allows you to put out a bunch of characters together specifically it allows you to put a string out to the character but it expects the address of the character to be specified in r0 and it it also expects that you will null terminate it with a zero at the end of the string so let's let's see how these are, this is implemented so when i say for example an operation like trap and if I give a value, let's say I'm doing the very first one, which is x20. So the machine code for this is simply 1111 is the op code, and the trap number goes in the rest, rest of the bit. So that's 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, which is 2, followed by 0000. 0, 0, 0. So what exactly does the op does the I the instruction execution entail of this instruction? So the instruction execution is the execution of this instruction involves first we have the trap vector table so the trap vector table we said is at z x 0 0 2 0 so we will we will do a couple of steps first step is we save the state what i mean by state we'll see as we go along state is two things for us it is the program counter because we want to come back to where we made this call so if this call was made let's say at x 3000 um, a then when the service is completed let's say the service was at x 0 2 1 b when the service is rendered and it's completed we want the control to come back we want the control to come back to the next line which is x 3000 b so we will save that save the state which is pc and we will also state save what is called the pro program status register because this has where we want to come back to and this is the state of the reg of the system when we made this call so this one remember has the nzp bits so 
we save the state. The second step is we look up the look up the trap vector table, which means that we take the instruction registers bits 11 through 0 and we zero extend that rather than sign extend that. We go to that memory location, we copy a value and we put that into our PC. So we look up the TVT and update PC. So we have we've lost our PC but but we don't have to worry because we've saved it before we updated it. So we put that into our PC. So the act of doing that will make us go from this point via the lookup. It puts us in this location in memory. So the PC is set to that. And now the execution continues. And whatever the service is, once the service is rendered, there is a special instruction at the end of the service, which we will learn more about. But for now, I'll just list the instruction. The instruction that is a special instruction here will, will be called RTI. The purpose of RTI is to, so the purpose of RTI instruction, which doesn't take any arguments by the way, but the execution of the RTI instruction involves just one step and the one step is restore PC saved PC and PSR. As it turns out, this notion of saving and restoring needs to be a little further hashed out. So let's see what we mean by saving and restoring and where does this save and restore happen. So to understand that, we see that our, our system space has and we said it has a trap vector table somewhere. And we have our user space which starts at x3000. So a region of memory which is just above the user space, this is what is called the system stack. In fact, you could say that the system stack starts at 2FFF and it grows up that way. And we'll see why stacks grow up and not the other way around. But for now, what we will notice is that when we say save the state, so we'll take that example before. When we said x3000a and there is a trap instruction to x20 there and the next location is x3000b, what we will see is in our system, when we make this call, the PC and PSR are saved here on top of it. And we'll see the order in just a second by looking at the actual code. So that's what, that's what the saving and restoring does, saving does. So we'll put those on the stack there. And when we do an RTI, so when we execute the code and do an RTI, these two are restored back. So they have to be in a specific place so that the system can know it and the save and save to the system stack and we restore from the system stack. And this is happening on a trap, on trap, and this is happening on RTI. So let's take a look at the code and uh, specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an example um, where the example code that I'm taking, the problem statement I'm working on, I want to use as an example is, is as follows. Let me uh, actually get the problem statement because I already wrote it down here. So let's grab the problem statement from here. The problem statement says prompt problem statement says prompt a user so this is the problem statement prompt the user for a binary number take an input k bit binary number that the user types at the console and and 
and as the user types it we're going to store remember what the user typed in we're going to echo it and also remember what the user typed in we're going to convert the number into its decimal decimal value and then print it out to the console so what's going to happen a typical interaction for us will look something like this this is the console the user is prompted to give a number it says give a binary number it says give binary number that's how it's going to be prompted and at the prompt he's going to type in whatever let's say one zero one uh, one zero and so he's going to um, yeah. let's say one more one so one zero one one zero one and so he's it's going to echo out a statement saying that's an uh, that's an odd number so it will say odd followed by the number itself one zero one one zero one will just display that onto the screen so the idea is when I hit the enter button that's what should happen so let's see this this involves a bunch of echoing printing things that we don't have instructions for so we're going to use the operating system to do the work for us so here's the actual code for it and I'm going to walk you through the code uh, but but first um, the basic idea will be we'll see the very first uh, line of our instruction that will make a lot of sense. So in our very first line we have an LEAR not prompt. So the first part of our instruction uh, code is just to display a string onto the screen. So we'll just look at these first two lines. These are using the put as system call. This put as um, service. This is the put as service that puts a string onto the screen. Um, but the but the contract of put as is that it expects in register r not the address of the string that is null terminated. So I have a string here called prompt, and I want this to show up. So I'm going to get the address of it into register r not, and I'm going to call trap x22. So let's just assemble this, go and start running this code. So that's my code. So the first step, I'm just going to first clear my console because I had run it before so I'm gonna step over the very first line I'll step over this first line which gets into R naught the address of 3020 where the string is so the next instruction is a trap x22 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna single step into that instruction which is means that I'm gonna go into the operating system code but right now what I want you to notice is the if I look at what's behind here, which is a 2FFF, um, you will notice that there's some garbage there right now. And I'm I'm actually gonna reload everything. I'll reinitialize my machine so that there's nothing there. And I'm gonna load an object file. So let's open the file, which is this guy. And now I'm gonna go back one step and I'm gonna see that there's nothing there. So now I'm gonna step one step over and now I'm going to step into this service routine so I'm going to use this one which will step into that service routine but right now what you will notice is I will be taken to the service routine that trap that puts runs we don't have to know what it does this is where it is at 0 0225 but let's go see what we get at x x2 f f I'm just going to get at 2FF, um, let's say 2FFC because I want to see a few of those. So we notice that there are two numbers on the stack. This is, remember the stack starts at 2FFF and 2FFE. So what we notice is the PC, which was X3002, is put on, on the stack at the top of the stack and the bottom of the stack has the PSR, which has the NZP bits and the and a most significant bit, which is the mode in which we are running, and um, and and so our trap did the save onto the stack. Now I'm I am not gonna uh, run this code in its entirety. Instead, what I will do is I will find a place where there is my um, where. Oops, um, just a second. Let's go. Let's step so that we can we can go into our service routine which is here and there is an RTI here so I'm gonna just put a breakpoint here and I'm gonna go all the way to the breakpoint so I'm gonna to continue to the breakpoint at that point we should see that the string give a binary number shows up on the screen and now 
I'm going to execute this RTI and what RTI does as we said is it pops those two things off the stack. So I'm going to step over which brings me back to 3002 because that's where the was the PC that we saved was and the PSR is also restored to what it was before I went and executed this. So so let's let's see what the rest of the code is and the rest of the code is simply prompting the user for a string getting a character at a time so we'll we'll actually do that uh, instead of doing it in code i'll just do it um, in my notes here and let's take a look at what is being done so this part should be straightforward this is where i prompt the user for a string so this is the prompting part and once i prompt i'm going to prompt the user so this is where the user types a character we get the character get character that the user typed in and we echo it back because the trap uh, get c doesn't echo it back so so that when the user types in they see what they typed in and then we're going to check if the user entered the enter button so this is where we're doing a comparison and if it is if the user entered a compare enter if enter was entered if the answer is yes then we are done otherwise if it's if it's no which is the part here then we will store it to our so this is the part where we store the character to our destination so in this example we the in this the purpose of this is that once the user types in everything the the string that the user typed in string binary string that the user typed in should be stored at x5000 so x5000 for example if the user typed 101 then one the character 1 the ascii character 1 the character 0 and the character 1 will be here followed by a, a 0 this is 0 not the ascii character and the number 5 will be stored here because that's a conversion of it at x4 fff so the most of the code should be self explanatory other than the uh, the fact that there are a couple of things that we do here that i want to highlight one of the common th mistakes in understanding how traps work particularly when you're reading character working with characters is a character that you read happens to be when i read the character here which is the trap x20 which read the character R0, let's say the user typed in a 1. R0 doesn't have the number 1. It has the ASCII code for 1, which happens to be X, the hexadecimal 31. Or more specifically in decimal, in, in base 10, that is a 49. So what we're doing here is we're subtracting that, subtracting 48 from it, so that we can get the number 1 out of it. So when I take 49 and subtract 2, if I take 49, which is in my R0, and I subtract R3 from it, which is a num ASCII offset, which happens to be minus 48, then I get the actual value in R0. Because I'm going to use this R0 to compute my number here. And the computation is pretty straightforward. This is where the computation is happening. And the idea is anytime I read a character, anytime I read a digit, I'm going to take that digit, take what I previously read and I'm going to left shift what I previously read and then I'm going to make room for the digit that has been entered so I add that number in so it's a pretty standard technique to get the compute what has been typed in so then we 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 keep checking and when we hit the end of input then we're gonna we're going to uh, uh, store the result that we computed in in memory and it's going to be at at a position that is minus one. So the num string location is, is 5,000. So it's gonna put it at 4FFF. And then we're gonna check whether the number is odd or even. So this is a masking operation. And the masking operation is gonna mask and, and isolate just the least significant bit. If it is zero, then we know that it's, it has to be an even number. 
If it is one, we know it has to be an odd number. So that's all this part of the logic is doing. And anytime I want to display a character, I have to put the character in R naught before I call trap x21. So the output, as we will see in just a second, will have a O or an E followed by a colon and then the number itself. So let's run the code. We will assemble it again, run it, and let's clear the console and let's let it go. And it's asking me for a binary number. So I'm gonna type in a binary number, one, it's being very slow, zero, I will end the video here because it seems like the LC3 tools is is having a problem with a, when I'm recording and running LC3 tools. So I'll uh, post the post the code and you can run it yourself.